What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today I have for you our Witcher 3 build for Death March difficulty. This is the best job that we could do and this is what we've used for our Death March playthroughs and we think is most effective. Now first off, I'll give you a rundown of the playstyle. On Death March difficulty, the biggest problems are that you'll take heaps of damage and mobs of enemies can easily be the end of you. You also end up spending lots of money on food and a lot of time in the loading screens from dying. But with the playstyle I'm about to explain to you, you won't have these problems. First, Quinn is your lord and saviour. Invest in it and use it all the time. Battles always begin with you casting Quinn, and if it breaks, you cast it again. This will help you survive and allow for a few mistakes in combat. It is your safeguard. Just so you know, I will go through a deeper look at the abilities selections towards the end of the video. The active shield ability of Quen is phenomenal. When you do take damage and lose vitality, instead of having to waste food, you can hold down the sign button to cast this Quen active shield. When it is attacked, the damage to the shield is converted to your health. Perfect for survival. The Axie sign is another important part. This playstyle uses Axie to control mobs and turn them against each other, providing stuns and distractions so that you can roll away and get your shield back up, heal up, or just get your bearings. The final ingredient is investing in fast attack abilities as well as the Cat School Techniques ability along with Feline Armor. This all together gets your sword DPS way up as well as your critical hit damage and chance. I will explain this in more detail later in the video. With the combination of all these, we are able to deliver massive sword damage, stay alive for longer with Quen, which also allows us vitality recovery through the active shield ability, and finally Axie, allowing enemies to be stunned or turned into allies, which distracts enemies focus from you. Here I will give you a quick rundown of what to focus on at the beginning of your playthrough. As you can see here, I have my level 10 Geralt, already invested in Fast Attack, Quen, and Axie. I've also just begun to put a point into Igni so that I can gain access to the third row in the Magic Tree. We don't actually use the Igni abilities, it's just to get the point requirement. I would also recommend getting the Cat School Techniques ability and wearing only Light Armor as soon as possible to get the maximum effects. Quen is your first priority then racking up fast attack points, then proceed with leveling them. Just remember that Quen should always take priority. It is the bread and butter of this build. If you've got points to spend and you don't have to spend them in other things, it's Quen, Quen straight away. Exploding shield, active shield, Quen intensity, and Quen discharge. Get those as soon as possible. Now let's have a look at the equipment and then the abilities. We are going to be using both the Griffin Swords and the Feline Armor. And of course, use the earlier versions of all, but this is the final level, the Mastercrafted sets. First, we will be using the Griffin Steel Sword Mastercrafted, which gives us the 20% sign intensity, plus the 15 critical hit damage bonus and the 5% crit chance. Also, we will be having the Griffin Silver Sword Mastercrafted with the 20% sign intensity once again, and a 25% crit hit damage bonus and a crit hit chance of 5%, plus a 10% chance to dismember. The reason we want these swords instead of the feline versions is because we want that extra sign intensity. Combined, we get an extra 40% for just having those two swords, and they've also got high crit damage bonuses and crit chance. We will be using the Mastercrafted Feline Armor, mainly for that 20% extra attack power. Same for the Mastercrafted Feline Gauntlets, 10% attack power. Mastercrafted Feline Boots, 10% attack power. And once again, 10% attack power on the Mastercrafted Feline Trousers. Now one of the main reasons we are using the feline set is because of Cat School Techniques ability. Each piece of light armor increases critical hit damage by 25% and fast attack by 5%. So we have a total increased critical hit damage of 100% and fast attack damage of 20%. And this armor choice is to mainly balance out the magical elements of this character and then still give it really high fast attack DPS with lots of critical chance and damage. Now let's move on to the abilities. I have every single rank of every ability that I use basically to maximize the benefits that come with it, the adrenaline point gain or the extra stamina regeneration. We have muscle memory here for fast attack damage increased by 25%. Precise blows increasing the chance of landing a fast critical hit by 10% and fast critical hit damage by 75%. Once again, there with that extra critical hit damage. And then finally, resolve. Basically, we don't lose any adrenaline from taking damage. Also, I'd just like to mention for Resolve, you only need three out of five to reach precise blows in the next 
level of the tree, but that's up to you. I still chose five out of five because I think not losing adrenaline is a pretty good idea. Now we have Exploding Shield for the Quen sign. Quen Shield pushes opponents back and deals damage when it breaks with a chance for knockdown. Absolutely excellent and the first thing I would invest in in a Death March playthrough. The next ability you want is Active Shield. Maintaining an Active Shield no longer draws stamina once you have three ranks. But now for the most important part of this ability is damage absorbed by the Shield Restores Player Vitality, which is vital for a Death March playthrough when you can't meditate to restore health. And instead of having to use lots of potions and food, food especially, you can just absorb damage from an enemy using this Quen shield sign and you will restore health just like that without having to waste your food. Then we have Quen intensity, increases sign intensity by 25%. Pretty straightforward, just makes Quen a whole lot more effective. Then we have Quen discharge, which reflects 25% of absorbed damage back to the attacker, which is just another added residual damage. We'll be using Quen a lot, so I don't see what the point is in not using this skill. Next we have Delusion, so the target does not move towards Geralt while he's casting Axie. Failed Axie attempts stagger the target, reduces Axie casting time, but most importantly increases the effectiveness in dialogues, which I use for story purposes and it also gets you out of a lot of fights. And that is absolutely important in a Death March playthrough because when every single fight is a huge deal, um, it's sometimes nice to avoid them if they can just be done easy with Axie, plus it gives you experience points when you use the dialogue option. Now we have Puppet for the Axie sign, which basically means we get an ally that deals 60% more damage, which is incredibly useful in mob situations. It takes the emphasis away from you in the battle, so you can duck out and use your signs or recover health or recover stamina. Then we have Axie Intensity, which is pretty straightforward. Once again, increasing Axie Sign Intensity by 25%. Next, we have the best Axie Sign ability, which is Domination. Two opponents can be influenced by Axie at the same time, allowing us a great deal of control when it comes to mobs, or even if there's just two enemies, just influence them both, or hit them both with a stun. The reason we have 5 out of 5 for Melt Armor and 1 out of 3 for Fire Stream in the Igni Tree is because we needed those extra points in order to unlock the third level of the Magic Tree so we could get to Quen and Axie Intensity. So that is all for skills and now you are ready to play the game on Death March difficulty. Well, I hope that helps, and I hope you guys use this for your Death March difficulty playthrough. If you do have any alterations or different suggestions for the best Death March build, do let us know, put them down in the comments, and we can talk about them. So thank you very much for tuning in. There will be more builds coming for which are three different playstyles. We'll do some alchemy ones, some sign ones, some just combat ones. All our social media links are in the description. If you do want to contact us, Twitter or Facebook inbox is the best. If you did enjoy this a lot, please like it and share it and get this around everywhere so we can get a lot of viewers for our builds. And if you haven't subscribed and you are one of these new viewers, please consider subscribing because we will be doing more builds and guides on Witcher 3. We also do Skyrim builds and Fallout builds. So thanks very much. I'm Scott from Fudge Muppet and I'll see you next time.